Don in London, hello. February the 19th, 2013. Beautiful day out. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. Alcoholic in recovery, that's me. I'm Don, I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And I'm very grateful that I'm in recovery rather than in the malady, the killer malady of addiction. And it could have been anything. Uh, people, places, things trying to behave perfectly so that you would like me, love me and I could fit in and have a convivial, joyful life but the problem is um, if life is not convivial with a drink in hand we try and try again to get back to conviviality and in the end it becomes a, a very unhelpful coping mechanism drinking it has probably temporary self-medicating qualities which might be useful but not in the long term, like anything which is addictive or creates dependency and uh, we get away from the truth of who we are and we get away from the truth of our situation and we cannot cope. It goes pear-shaped and my life did go very pear-shaped. So I'm very lucky. I got some professional help and they suggested, why don't you try the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous? And I didn't want to because it was the place where people went if they were never going to drink again and the first thing that somebody said well it's only for today so why not give it a go and I'm not one for joining I'm stubborn, defiant and think I ought to do it on my own well that's what I thought but my attitude has changed when it comes to sobriety and many things asking for help is quite a good idea or asking and consulting and including people in how should we go about this makes life a lot smoother and we learn what we can do and what we can't do a lot faster rather than having a feeling of entitlement and an expectation that life owes us something life does not owe us anything because <coughs> if it did it would be the same for everyone and we can't have it all good can we because that's not how we learn so the fellowship of AA has provided me with a place of sanctuary and anonymity to share the painful truth of me, a sanctuary to find out who I am and could be on a daily basis. So it's not behind closed walls, it's in a group or fellowship that we find out and share experience, strength and hope of our journey in life. What's working, what's not working, what the calamities were, what the tragedies were and all the tall stories we can possibly imagine are shared. So that's how it works, we share together to find sobriety for today and I'm going to share the AA preamble and then share some of my own thoughts and experiences <coughs> and feelings today I'm quite angry about something actually and it's not about you or it might be we'll see anyway Alcoholics Anonymous the AA preamble if you're in AA you know it and you also know I cannot speak for you never I don't speak for AA either <laughs> that's the way it works so I share about it but I am not representing other people and as far as I'm concerned everybody is unique and authentic in the fellowship of AA on their own personal path so I do not represent other people and their journey but you can hear it and it might help you on your journey into sobriety so AA what is it Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect. This is it. It, the fellowship is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. So what it means, and I'm very pleased to say this, is that you can have all the opinions and beliefs that suit you, but you don't have to adopt anybody else's. Or if you hear something which is good for you, and works for you, and you want to adopt it as a belief, opinion or way of life, fine it's your choice but you don't have to join in with things which you feel are bad for you and there's plenty of that that goes on in life anyway so we have to learn the can do can't do for ourselves or what's right for us as a person 
uh, the fellowship is there to provide a place of safety to do to actually find out who we could be or might be or are just one day so our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so in the spirit of sharing this is what I do so if you are in AA I speak for myself as you know and not for you and if you're new to AA I speak for myself and not for you so it's about what works for me and sharing a message of experience, strength and hope which is right <coughs> excuse me, I'm a bit itchy this morning I'm a bit scratchy in my head don't know why that is uh, maybe just a bit over tired so February 19th 2013 my notes from me step 2 sanity, came to believe that a power greater than me would restore me to sanity and uh, yeah I'm very happy to say the power of the many, teamwork, sharing, inclusion, learning about how life works for other people and finding out how life works for me with a few few steps to take account of, 12 steps, 12 principles of living so we get our freedom back, freedom to be ourselves <coughs> and not to be like somebody else so for me the gift of acceptance and the gift of desperation and I know often I hear work people talk about the gift of desperation it got so bad I needed help well that is desperate sometimes but also the gift of acceptance accepting where we are in a place of madness when we were drinking and needing to come out of that madness and find some sanity so my new life in recovery all about, about the gift of acceptance and gratitude to be sober first and foremost so that the rest of life can happen can work on the emotional and spiritual level and on the emotional and spiritual level where feelings fit the reality of now feelings fit with what is going on and I can cope with it and if I cannot cope I can ask for help both inside and outside fellowship because fellowship provides sobriety and still we need help in the, the big world of life you know, both have to work together I can ask for help I have no gift of desperation this is what I think about me I have no gift of desperation maybe I just had the gift of emptiness and a realisation without help I was going to die sooner rather than later, later in a pickle and pickled so I pretty much worked it out yeah death was on the cart, I've been in hospital and been revived before more than once and I had ego I just left it off or rather I was just in denial because I left it off that I was revived anyway I feel this is my feeling the gift of desperation assumes I wanted to live I was way past that and I don't know yeah I was, I was way past wanting to live and I don't know that it, that it is helpful to suggest that driven by fear or a thousand forms of fear actually made the difference looking back I am uncertain and it is hard to work out whether the gift of desperation has much meaning for me these days and I don't know whether the gift of desperation I feel desperate when I have uh, a, a hypo which is a medical condition brought on by type 1 diabetes courtesy of living longer and getting a, another virus which caused it and the desperation is to eat some sugar quick so I don't die or go unconscious and then die anyway driven mad by drink back in the day my feelings were, were fearing being alive rather than fearing being, fearing being dead alive the journey back to reality was going to be very difficult and it was only when I realised that it was okay to be unable to stop drinking and not be able to do it on my own that with help it dawned on me that life could get no worse life couldn't get any worse could it? You know, an end of my drinking well sobriety proved the assumption wrong and if initially life did get worse simply because all these suppressed feelings from all the, over the years erupted coupled with homelessness and abject misery and total powerlessness a friend remarked recently the last six months of drinking and the first six months of sobriety 
are a make or break situation and I feel he was right for me it was but when I actually said okay no matter how bad it's going to get over the next 90 days which was the target I sort of had in my head just one day at a time of course but the idea of getting, getting to 90 meetings in 90 days or actually as it turned out as many meetings a day as I could because I was devoting and saying okay this is the if I'm going to make this turning point in life I need to accept I must do as much as I possibly can and do it as thoroughly as I can so when they say rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path I guess that's true because I did thoroughly follow it and the reason I could follow the path was nobody was telling me what to do but of course it, it, you know in life people do feel that they've got the right idea and if they feel that they've got something on their side which is bigger than them and they're representing it so that's why I don't represent AA I can't I don't want to because it's what it is for you as a person that matters not me and we all share together and we work out what we can and cannot do but it's it's like any belief if it's imposed if it's driven through fear this is you know a thousand forms of fear actually it wasn't that it was living living life which was fearful for me fear of life rather than proof of life so being restored to sanity simply implies that we got to a place of insanity and that's true because it is insane to drink yourself to death either slowly or quickly a living nightmare where addiction takes over and all we want is oblivion and the pain to stop that's why we did it in the end and realizing that I was going to face really tough times and I had to go with the flow of not drinking and then living the horror of those early days sleeplessness nightmares when I did sleep and always looking over my shoulder feeling paranoid that if I did something wrong I would be found out that's paranoia we tend to make like of just how horrible recovery can be in early days so that I don't know why we do maybe we don't want people to be put off trying for themselves but you know if you if you set up a false promise for somebody don't worry it's going to be a doddle all you have to do is stop drinking and go to meetings well that's a part of it but what do you do with all that shit going around in your head and the answer is you can't deal with it all in one go you know 90 meetings physically we get over the nasty shock and then all these blinking feelings keep coming up nobody told me about that but I knew they would I had enough gumption at the time to realise that all the horror that was going to follow it was detoxifying myself we tend to make light of just how horrible recovery can be in early days I don't know why we do maybe we don't want people to be put off when we share about it or we just feel unable to live the story again and sometimes you know the it's just horrible so odd for most people for most people if we are lucky we forget the pain and we emerge into a place of acceptance of reality one day at a time so the notion that you know it's all going to go away well maybe it does for some people it didn't happen for me I had to work at it and actually I had to say to myself I had to acknowledge you know, how do I feel, why, what can I do I felt horrible and what could I do, I could go to meetings and you know sit in the sanctuary of a meeting knowing that I didn't have to say anything nobody was going to really put their, impose their will on me, at least I hope not and they didn't I was very lucky in that respect but I did hear a lot of nonsense spoken as well as a lot of common sense spoken so those who spoke common sense I tried to say hello to and those who spoke nonsense I let them get on with it it's not my business and I realised that we're all in a different state of being restored to sanity on a daily basis so it's only good for a day so the gift of acceptance every single day we are faced with life and this is it gift of acceptance every single day we are faced with life on life's terms which means that we continually encounter the good bad and un ugly of life daily and then what we do and then what we do about it sober first and then the freedom to be human to be a human being <coughs> this is it sober first and then the freedom to be a human being living a human existence 
Acceptance of life on life's terms does not mean we are downtrodden and servile. This is it. Acceptance of life on life's terms is not about saying, oh, well, it's just like that, so it must be like that. It's saying, well, hang on a minute, what can I do about it? It means we can do, make the best of what we have when our needs are met and our feelings and our thinking and our actions are more clear. So freedom of choice. I mean, if it didn't go that way, where would it go? What would be the point? And also making the best choices that we can determine. And when we are unsure, we can ask for help. And realistically, sometimes we get it, sometimes we get help, and sometimes we don't. Acceptance is a continual roller coaster where our feelings are rising and falling, depending on the issues we are dealing with. Sometimes feelings are extreme, sometimes feelings are quite serene, and sometimes feelings are deeply loving. And of course, the opposite can be true in the world of acceptance where we accept we have some hateful thoughts about people but it doesn't mean we're going to act on them or we feel hate about a person because they're just driving us potty I hate what they're doing but I accept the fact that that's the way they are and it's for me to look at what can I do about it and usually to get out of the way if I can or ask them to get out of my way which is more difficult because then it's confrontation, isn't it? Or it's not, actually. It depends on how you do it. But it is admitting and accepting that some people will, will not be right for us and let them go and let them be. Feelings are real. What we think next and the actions we take are the choices we make today. So feelings are real. And all this nonsense about fake it to make it. There is a mental process called adopting thought processes in order to try to change something. Adopting a different way is not faking it, it's saying I'm changing. So you don't have to pretend, you say look I'm trying something new. So it's not fake. Fake it to make it is bollocks. Just a personal view. So you know it puts people back. So when somebody says if you say to them, I'm not coping very well, and they say, well, fake it to make it, tell them to fuck off, because it's not going to work. You know, pretending to be okay means that you're delaying your reaction to reality. If you say to a person, I can't cope, and they say, well, sit with your feelings, they ought to be saying, maybe, how are you feeling about this? And if you say, I'm frustrated and feel hateful about my situation, then talk through what you can do and what you can't do. You can't necessarily make the feelings go away immediately because we need to feel them. So this idea of sitting with your feelings, I don't know, expressing your feelings is probably better, getting them out in the open. And then you get some feedback on them. And you might find that people say, well, you're completely bonkers and you, you know the way you feel right now is just your personal view of not getting your own way. So you're getting some feedback straight away about you know, being unrealistic. You know, she won't love you just because you love her, or vice versa. You know, it doesn't work like that. Either people love you or they don't love you. And if you try and make them love you, you're powerless. What you can do is be a good person and see whether you are lovable, first and foremost. And you'll be so sober lovable is much better feelings are real, what we think next and the actions we take are the choices we make today. Today we accept some of the time we can do things and some of the time we cannot do things and our wisdom to know the difference is growing daily as do our relationships with the rest of the world, they keep on growing or diminishing depending on where we're going and what we're doing. Only if you are checking on your sanity being restored one day at a time. So if something's driving you mad you should say it to yourself something's driving me mad or you know, to a place of impossibility insanity so what works in fellowship common ground in fellowship a desire to stop drinking and help others in the same boat one day at a time is good depending on your personal beliefs and please develop your own personal beliefs and opinions about how the steps work for you because they will work how you work them and according to your life experience. 
so if you don't have a bad day in recovery all well and good but most of us have a we have a mixture of good, bad and ugly on a daily basis and it's our, how we are able to cope and ask for help when we need it that's how it works so develop your personal beliefs and opinions please do common ground in fellowship sobriety and a desire to help other people and then the question of morality is a personal thing so depending on your personal beliefs please develop your own personal beliefs and opinions about how the steps work for you you are adding your own understanding to how the 12 steps work in your life by sharing experience, strength and hope the common ground is fertile with many ideas, beliefs and opinions and I only have my own so please get more which is why we have a fellowship it will always be the many ideas, beliefs and opinions which help me be restored to sanity and the freedom to choose the actions I can take to improve my emotional and spiritual living. The morality that each person develops is their own journey and how they apply themselves to life needs to be a personal journey. There are many criminals and thieves as well as good people and wonderful people in fellowship just like in society. So you need to be aware of what you're hearing and then you have to use your own brain box to work out what is right for you. This is just my personal opinion. The morality that each person develops is their own journey and how they apply themselves to life needs to be a personal journey. I always resist, resist and resisted joining anything in the hope that I might adopt and become like you. I don't want to be like you, I want to be, want to be me. I don't want to be like you and I don't want to change what you are becoming either and I think that's most important I don't want to change what you are becoming and if anyone is strong arming you into believing something you are not strong arming you into believing something you are not you just don't need to and my advice is tell them to fuck off and mind their own business every single day because we're not here to tell each other what to do it's a personal endeavour life and we are surrounded by other human beings in their own personal endeavours and then we get included and then we become part of something and fellowship was probably the first thing I really truly joined and believed in because you could be you and I could be me every single day so I don't know why somebody said it to me yesterday <clears throat> that I needed to go to anon anonymous fellowships because in their opinion I had not attended any and this is the judgment that is often handed down by those who peddle the notion that they speak for God or speak for Jesus a bit like fellowship there are no leaders and we are trusted servants and when people judge others as defective because they don't hold the same opinion and beliefs I suggest the defects of the peddler are very obvious in the mirror so that's ego, sanctimony and piety dripping with righteousness so I feel a bit righteous today myself by saying please be you and I'll be me but you know it's the it's valued the difference and diversity which makes life worth living if we're all the same what would be the point? And I, you know, don't forget, most people who actually survive into sobriety are stubborn, defiant, and very difficult customers. I know I am. No, I'm not. Because I want, I want the best for you. Which is, and only you know that, not me. So those who peddle the notion that they speak on behalf of a higher power are full of shit. Nobody does. So a bit like fellowship there are no leaders and we are trusted servants and when people judge others as defective because they don't hold the same beliefs and opinions I suggest the defects of the peddler are very obvious. Ego, sanctimony, piety dripping with righteousness. Every bloody day, yeah. Those who believe in God and Jesus, 99% of them, I have no idea what the real statistic is. 99% of the time, however, offer the best advice and suggestions about my welfare. 
so regardless of their belief in God and Jesus which I find remarkable and to be admired because it's a matter of personal morality and conscience where we come to in our beliefs 99% of the time they give me the best advice and suggestions about my welfare and they would invite me to join in with them and I would re maybe respectfully say I'll find out more but if I decline to keep on coming please don't rule me out as a human being and they don't however 1% have taken it a bit too far in my opinion and they are definitely not saying today question mark I don't know and I don't need to know about the 1% so I am allowed to be angry about the 1% who think they represent everything that's good on the planet and we've seen many examples of that in history all about their view and why, I lo why am I in AA? because I can have my own views and you can have your own views and we are respecting our diversity a model of society in miniature I'm allowed to share my experience, strength and hope about people who keep on telling me, telling each other what to do and the irony is that some people in fellowship forget there are no rules or regulations to undermine and cause power struggles. Everything is done through the group conscience which is something I need to talk about because it's tradition too and it's February so 12 steps, 12 traditions, one a month. So you know, it's all done through the group conscience how we determine how we work together in unity, service and recovery and, it, and what happens, and this is true everything is done through the group conscience and sometimes these get, get hijacked by malfeasance and al ideology there is nothing in the fellowship, suggestions or traditions which suggest that anyone ought to adopt any ideology AA is for sobriety and its primary purpose and when individuals bend it their way if you try and bend it a certain way, in time, it will spring back to being common ground again. And it's true, and a common purpose where people can have their own values and opinions and not be told what to do, or I would be dead by now. I know that. Because if I had gone to meetings where I, had, I didn't have my human rights, why on earth would I go? So for me I don't mind anyone believing in anything particularly as long as you keep working the 12 steps and sharing how they work for you that is perfect even the 1% I need you to be there because you're a good example of what I don't want to be I go with the 99% believers who share bloody well and with common sense and good advice because they have the power of the many with them helping them make it in life so you know don't follow don't follow fanatics follow those people who have unity of purpose around their worship or wherever it might be and how they share their experience strength and hope of living and you know underneath it all is gratitude thank God or thank the higher power or I don't have a word problem with the word God I have a problem with the 1% who try to persist in saying God is this way and Jesus says. I don't feel that we can represent a power greater than us which we don't understand. But what we can do is saying, you know, the wisdom of the centuries is with us today through the teachings and readings of many people. And as long as it's like fellowship where we are allowed to make our own minds up I have absolutely no problem with that why should I? so I do believe in the higher power and I do believe the higher power works through people 99% of the time people working together provide solutions bigger than themselves God does not work in mysterious ways in my opinion most people who believe in God work very hard at learning the truth of now And sometimes say witness I don't know what exactly I can't explain it from a religious point of view you need to go to a religious person to understand but you know it's not mysterious to me that large numbers of people working in unison around truth and this is how it works for me learning the truth of now how to love people and how to be loved back which is also extremely difficult to be loved back 
and with that balance of morals, vices and virtues always in the background, which is nature at its extremes, we're learning. So, those who believe in God work very hard at learning the truth, how to love and how to be loved back, and learning the wisdom of life. That's what we do. We're learning wisdom. So, I would not undermine any religious belief, unless it's that 1% where it's ideology. The ology bit is corrupting and controlling. But most people aren't. They, do, they just want to love you. And you want to be loved back. Anyway, and I have the utmost admiration and seek help often from those who believe and understand, understand things far bigger than me. So I'm not trying to cramp anyone's style. So please don't cramp mine. And as the Rolling Stone said, hey you, get off my cloud. And the same applies to me. I need not get on your cloud either but I will get on the I probably will get on the nerves of some who feel they are representing the higher power and you can't in my opinion because if I have an opinion about it which says you don't represent my understanding of a higher power you can have your higher power but I've got mine too and it's my understanding of it and that's what it says and the God of our understanding means personal belief yours are right for you so get off my cloud and the same applies to me I need not get on your cloud either love one another and encourage learning and humility keep on asking for help and learning how to be open, honest and willing to change living to the truth, love and wisdom of now seems to be a good way forward yeah, hallelujah for me as well, one day at a time. So, you know, we it's about flexibility, it's about understanding, it's okay to believe in what you believe, but don't ram it down the throat of somebody else. You can share your beliefs and opinions, but AA as a whole, it's common ground, so we all share our beliefs and opinions, and then probably at odds with each other, but that's good. And beware, beware the agnostic who shouts, I'm one of those alcoholics in the book. There ain't no such thing as one of those. If, you're an if you have a desire to stop drinking and you call yourself an alcoholic, that's what you are. Nobody else can do it for you, because until you admit and accept on a daily basis, sobriety first, and then the life, rest of life can happen. Learning how to love, how to be loved back and useful, open, honest and willing, wisdom all available except for one thing we need to contingent on the day we ask about certain things like am I sane today we're learning to be sane today one day at a time the serenity prayer the can do can't do every single day can do this can't do that and when I can't do that can I ask for help to make it happen I don't really think I ought to try being a, an airline pilot with type 1 diabetes because my blood sugars keep going up and down and sometimes without any particular cause other than my body must have found some more sugar somewhere and normally I stick it in my gob I still like wine gums so can't do wine gums today get my blood sugars in order so to God or in good conscience that's how it works for me and God is not against anybody I don't think so anyway don't feel so emotionally or spiritually God doesn't pick winners you know it's it's not a race it's not a race to heaven spiritual is now the best we can be good, bad or ugly so to God the serenity prayer to God and all good as you choose to believe God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, everything about you. Courage to change the things I can, everything about me. And the wisdom to know the difference on all matters, just for today, by the moment, minute, hour, and all day long. One of the things I was talking about to a friend of mine last night was about forgiveness. If we cannot forgive ourselves, or if we cannot forgive other people 
our progress will be hindered hugely because of piety and righteousness judge not because you do get judged and I will no doubt for this but I don't mind that I don't mind being judged because I will be keep on judging if you need to be yourself and work it out what works for you that's all that matters to me what works for you but don't piss on my parade I haven't got one really I don't need one 